Um, Hi. All right. Um, so I'm going to uh, kind of piggyback on what Keys was saying this morning, and I want to be open and honest. I'm not going to like, you know, um, I'm not going to talk like there aren't things that we need to work on with Transmart. I want this to kind of be a town hall. I'm going to bring up a couple things that um, I've noticed within the um, within the Pfizer release that we did back in February. Uh, we went from 1.0 to 1.2.2. Uh, and then some hiccups and some positive things that came on that. And then also talk about um, my work with the foundation as far as quality control there and talk about some hiccups. And then m moving forward, I want to talk about things that we're, we're, we have planned. Um, and I want to talk to you guys about ideas. I mean, we only have 30 minutes, so I'm not going to you know, um, make this a big thing, but just know, know me, and then, you know, I'll give you guys my, my email address, my Transmart email address, so, like, know that you, you, we're going to be heard, and we're going to, I guess the theme is move forward. Awesome. Okay, so first I want to talk about the relationship between Pfizer and Transmart. So Pfizer's been a gold partner since 2013. Um, we have the equivalent of three full-time employees that are at one point working um, on Transmart, and, um, we contribute to the, the foundation with documentation, with bug fixes, with developer time, and uh, QA hours. So bug testing on the, the foundation side as well. <clears throat> so Transmart within Pfizer, we've actually been using it since 2012. Um, it is the solution. We, we market Transmart for translational research data you know, management at Pfizer. There's nothing else that we, we push more than, than Transmart. This is, this is our... This is our uh, this is our baby, and it's uh, supported by TNBI, which is Translational and Bioinformatics. I'm one of the team members, and one of about seven or eight. Um, and it's it's huge. Uh, you know, the database is about a terabyte. I think that's um, understated. And there's about four billion records so far, most of that being GWAS or genotype data. Um, the the customers that we have are are you know groups within Pfizer that are interested in in looking at their data, and we configure and load the data the way they want it. It's like a mini startup. It's actually really fun. So I um, want to talk about the 2.0 release that we call internally, which is 1.2.2. So uh, we deployed this in February, and um, it had a lot of feature enhancements, bug fixes, and basic performance tuning. Um, all of that information actually got pushed back to the foundation once we did that, um, any fixes. So uh, you know, anything that we did was, was to, to meet uh, Safe Harbor certifications, and this is the basic schema of what uh, what we did. So we had three um, instances: dev, stage, and prod. And um, so the developers would work in state um, in dev, push to stage. Me and a couple of other members would test there, and then once it was done, we'd move to prod. <clears throat> so um, let's see. Basically, how I want to say this is because there wasn't a lot of documentation from the foundation side about the 1.2.2 release, we developed a lot of stuff on our own that was just test scripts and documentation. Um, and it was a lot. So there are, on, you know, we created around 106 test scripts and over 1,000 pages of release documents, most of which were internal to Pfizer, but um, it, was, it, was, it was a big effort. Um, as far as the bug tracking process, so I was, I was one of the, um, the, the QA leads for this 1.2.2 release, um, so we track internally in Pfizer. We had an issue tracker that was SharePoint. Um, we would, you know, when we had the availability, we'd confirm those internal bugs through the foundation um, instance, and we'd document them through um, through their JIRA, which, um, you know, both open and closed bugs. And we would, um, you know, talk to, we put in the comments of JIRA any additional information that might help the foundation or community members. So, all right, here we go. So there was a, there was a problem that I want to talk about that, that might help you guys. Um, and this actually was kind of my fault. <laughs> um, so the, the, release was, the release date was being pushed back, at least two to three weeks, um, maybe even four. And um, with that became slippage of formally documenting bugs and, and issues. Um, and that was just, you know, it, it turned into formally putting information into the issue tracker to, oh my god, let, let me email the developers like at 2 a.m. and just see if the things have fixed, to, oh my god, we just found something, let me just ping them on the messenger and see what's going on. And um, it was really hard to, once you 
got that kind of um, that ball rolling, it was really hard to get back on track. And uh, to be honest, it, it backtracked me a couple weeks, and it was it was really hard. Um, and we had to reassess. You know, once once everything was cleared and we were able to to push things out. Um, I, I went back and I, I reassessed those bugs and I went through my emails and I, I formally put them back in where they should have been. And I had then had to take the time to go into JIRA and update accordingly. So as you can see, it was just a lot of wasted time. Um, in addition to that, it was actually really difficult to, to test the bugs that we found in Pfizer against the foundation instance. Um, there aren't a lot of large data sets in the, the, the foundation instance and I've, I've talked to um, to you know the guys there, and we're going to get some more demo data. But um, it's hard to to verify um, an issue if it's you know if you don't have the data to 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 see if it's a data related issue or if it's not. Um, that that was pretty difficult, and it's also difficult when we're on 1.2.2 and the foundation is already on 1.2.4 or now 1.2.5. Um, and also we had a problem uh, regarding the master branch. So um, we had one of, one of our updates that we pushed to um, push to GitHub, and uh, it was a fix. It was called the R pivot code. Basically, there was an issue with exporting, and when you would export something, it would um, it would multiply so much that it would basically crash the server. And I would I'd be the uh, I'd be that annoying person that would <laughs> you know uh, that would be emailing everyone saying sorry, prod is down, it's my fault. Um, and so we, we pushed a, a fix back to the foundation, and I'm not sure exactly what happened, but that code never got merged in the master branch. And actually, as an aside, um, at the datathon, we had that very same issue, and it was that's what led us to find out that that code wasn't merged. Um, so you know that's a lesson learned that we need to be more diligent about merging the code bases and making sure people know where there are fixes and what those fixes are. And then in general, obviously, more communication between different developers. <clears throat> so I know we talked about some bad stuff, so I want to now talk about, again, moving forward. And I want to open this to talk to people about their experiences and maybe some ideas. Um, so as far as Pfizer, so we created um, a better internal formal bug tracking um, process, and we've actually moved from the disgusting SharePoint. Um, I would not wish it on my enemies to use SharePoint, it's the most disgusting thing, um, to TeamForge. So TeamForge, we use that for our code base. Um, there has been talk about moving to JIRA because that's where the foundation is and we can use GitHub, um, but we're still in that kind of, um, in that phase of trying to see what's what. Um, we, we have a team member, which is me, now formally dedicated to making sure TeamForge or the bug, bug tracking is up to date. This is actually really important. I don't know if you, uh, if you guys, understand the importance of making sure that, that this kind of uh, site is up to date. I mean, when you have lead architects and lead developers asking you, hey, like, what's the, you know, what's going on with this with the site, I can't at a glance tell you if things aren't updated. And that's, that's actually really frustrating for the developers and for everyone else. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit of project management, and it's going to be, you know, a little tedious having to comb through emails and see if that bug's been documented, but you know what, in the long run, for the for the sake of the enterprise solution, you got to do it, and I can't stress that enough. Um, as far as the foundation side, there has been a quality initiative that's been developed. Um, there's a quality working group which I'm a part of, um, and we're completely revamping the release process. Thank you. <laughs> it's really exciting. I, I actually have a couple slides about it uh, if we have some time. And um, in addition, the Hive is actually um, with Trait um, helping out with documenting bugs more formally. Um, into JIRA. So we have, we're starting to get more momentum and starting to move things forward. Um, but in general, we're all trying to open up more with uh, communication to all organizations that are interested in, in doing the things that Pfizer um, is doing among, among other ones. Um, okay. So these are the new players. Um, the release process manager is going to be in place. That's, I think, Terry. And monitoring, monitoring and testing and basically providing the release artifact that's going to move forward. Um, the project management committee, which I know I think Ward is a part of, among um, some other people, I'm not sure, um, they're going to be helping with creating the timing and the content of the release. This is really important because now there's like responsibility and, and there's going to be a process of, okay, what is actually going to be in the release? Um, I felt like it wasn't as structured as what we're proposing now. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I, Obviously, you can hear that in my voice, but I'm very excited. Um, testing groups. So there have been testing groups, and there's been test, um, 
bug fixathons, I think is what we're calling them. But now we're going to have a formally identified people, and we're going to have timestamps of, okay, you know what? We're pushing this out to stage. We're going to take a week, and you guys are on call. I mean, it doesn't matter how much, how much time you commit, but just know that you've got this week, and you have to help out then. Instead of, oh, if, you know, if you want, go ahead. You know, it, we're going to actually put responsibility in people's hands. When they say they're going to volunteer, you've got to hold them to it. So this is the actual stage um, process. So this is modeled after Apache. Um, so first one being what will actually be in the release, so the, the project management committee, uh, planning for the release, so the timing, uh, release feature development, if it's only a major release, nothing minor, um, releasing debugging and development for testing, and creating all the re uh, release artifacts, and then finally announcing and marketing. So I say all this because I'm I'm very happy to be at both Pfizer and Transmart, and I'm even more happy that we're, we're putting together this game plan. We're addressing and admitting that things need to be in place, and we have them. Um, I guess I, I do have some slides, um, well, besides the contributions, of actually what goes into each stage. I can, I can bring that up, but I really do want to kind of gauge the room and see how you guys feel about what we've put together so far. If you even if you disagree with it, act, you know, duke it out. You know, let's talk about it. Um, but I really want this to be an open, I mean, this is an open source software. I, it shouldn't be me and some other people um, deciding this. So um, with that and the contributions, please um, open this to questions. Hi. So is, is it quite as intentional to align with the Transmart Foundation version of Transmart. So I think in, oh, sorry. I'm assuming that, that is the case, um, because what, what I've seen so far is it seems that many versions are tweaked here and there. Um, so is the ideal situation that there is a version that suits everybody, or will there always be versions of versions? So that's kind of a question for Keith, <laughs> as far as the, the overall business model. I mean. I, I hope that there will be one standard kind of software, and then people can can add their own modules, if, if you will. Because uh, in delivering a managed service, ideally, we'd like to see something like the Ubuntu model, where you have a long-term support release, mm -hmm. and you have a and you have a little LTS. Okay. Yeah, no, that's that's great feedback. And um, like I said, I'm I'm not the CEO, so I don't feel comfortable answering what what I think um, I think it should be. But um, no, I definitely, as far as Pfizer's concerned, I know that we, we're trying very hard to align. I mean, it's hard right now because we're at 1.2.2 and they're already at 1.2.5. Um, we are hoping, we have a, a minor release coming out in November and have a release. We're going to try to align with the um, 1.3 alpha, I think, that's coming in Q1. Um, so we are, try we are trying. There might be times when we skip and we'll hopefully see if it's going to be a big adjustment uh, as far as the back end. Um, thanks. Any other questions or comments? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the subject of that um, fix that you said, did it make it into the master branch? Yes. I think the true story is it made it into the master branch, but it was one day after the release. Ah, OK. And I threw you under the bus. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Any other comments? Sorry. I think this. I'm pretty sure it should. Yeah, from from what I heard with Terry. How easy is it to uh, sort of detach the data from the application um, and then to reattach it as well? So, you, where the use case might be is that if you had, um, you know, maybe you had your, your data set and you had a uh, custom version of Transmart set up, you wanted to see the model existing in a different um, open you know, set community version. You had a system set up with just a vanilla community version. You could essentially just recapture to your data and out of the box quickly, hopefully simply test your test the the, the 
scenario is I'm just trying to remember whether it's uh, optimal, whether it's something that's a inherent more immigration or in the upstream version, and then you can start to run the production from there. Hmm. So you know, setting up an environment to have that sort of flexibility is, is that what can be useful or they are doing that? That's my and, and I I mean I'm I'm totally in agreement with you about about the difficulties of, of determining whether or not it's a data centric bug, right? I, I mean I even mentioned just earlier that you know, determining if if there's an issue um, from the foundation to Pfizer is really hard. And, and you know, like the data that we're sometimes the GWAS centric bugs, you know, because they're like, you know, the, the amount of data that goes along with them, I mean, it's really hard to replicate that in, in another instance and try to, you know, you have to check different analyses to see if it's just that analysis that got loaded incorrectly or, um, I mean, that export, that export issue probably, you know, didn't, it didn't come out from looking at the foundation because I think the largest amount of, um, of patients I don't think hit that maximum. Um, so I mean, if I, I don't know. I've, I've opened it to everyone else about this interme intermediate stage. Is that what you're saying? Like a vanilla version? Yeah. Essentially, during the iteration, we would you know, branch every feature out. Each feature would have its own employee component of the user that would then match. We would then um, deploy all the other the code there and test it there. If you saw something that looked like a regression, it would very easily switch back to the master environment, mm -hmm. compare the, the results of the test, and determine whether it was you know, above the master or a regression in the future. Branch, and then at the end, it converts them. So we had to Doing that in it was it took a lot of effort to get that set up and take great dividends, but this was a single company with ten you know developers working in the same way. Doing that externally in a in a wider um you know environment is a lot different where it's like something people are thinking is next to the high value or are they interested in doing things like this? Anyone have any comments on Oh, sorry. The Question about in life. So obviously you, you have a uh, you have a book prioritization process. Yes. Um, what does Pfizer do? If you, you get a, a, a severity one mm -hmm. fault, yeah. what do you actually do? Because this is a community developed piece of code. So how do you get the resolution to find as an organization? Do you want to get to any kind of SLAs? So, uh, for example, the R pivot code issue, and we we thought that was a very high um, severity issue, and we we found um, we created a we had Andrew coded that solution like two weeks I think from when we found it, right? And then uh, we ended up pushing it instantly pushing it back. Um, I think we had a uh, a couple other feature um, enhancements that we had, and I think we bundled that together to be that that piece of code that we we pushed um, into the the Pfizer branch, I think is what it was called. Um, but definitely, it's it's really important for us to, to put high priority items into the eyes of, of the foundation. Would it clearly be on the best of its basis, because it was a good 
the resolution of the actual code itself, mm -hmm. fixing the it can only be on the desktop. Yeah, and I mean it's it's in our it's our best best interest to, to fix those high priority bugs. So, um, I mean to determine what is a high priority bug, I think is what you're saying. If are you saying that if there's like a high priority issue, that's um, if it's a real showstopper. I mean, yeah. Oh, of course. What do you do about it because it's a community environment? I mean, we we've always been uh, a company where we, we've been very open about pushing pushing things back. I don't think we've hidden anything. I don't think we've held anything back. So um, it's in our it's in our culture to to up oh, you go uh oh. <laughs> When you said when I when I said push it back to the foundation, I don't mean push back the bug. I mean the actual fix. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry, that was I can see how that's yeah. Here's a problem. No, we definitely fix it and we push it back. But there are bugs, in, you know, for so for me, um, all the all the issues that I found um, and all the feature requests I push to the foundation, whether or not they're open or closed, or whether or not they're open, right? So. Um, just so people know. And I don't know if it's going to work with Sanofi's. I don't know if that bug's going to be there with any other instance. I just, it's in everyone's best interest to know that this is known to cause stuff. Um, and that's the challenge that I'm having working both for Pfizer and Transmart and putting my Transmart hat on, trying to figure out, okay, is this a valid bug? Because now we don't have enough, enough to, you know, enough to like test data, enough information and, um, to really test it. And if it's in a different uh, version, you know, there's a lot of moving parts that, that I don't know if I can truly say if something's fixed on the foundation side because they're, they're so different. I think Pfizer is being one of the best citizens in the community for pushing back the, the fixes, but also mainly pushing back all the, the giving back all the, all the bug reports and indeed figuring out whether they just are just relevant for Pfizer but also, to, also relevant for the wider community. And over CT1 Great, for example, we, we are really active in the community, but even for us it's hard to bring all the bugs that someone all the bugs that someone reports on the internal version, also check whether they work on another version from the foundation and bring it back to that it remains really hard. Yeah. Um, and I guess uh, before I close, I just wanted to just mention, you know, maybe an idea is we can um, coordinate business analysts from from sponsors or from organizations, and maybe we all can talk to each other, right? I mean, it's already difficult enough for to to get um, time from the developers, but you know, people that work alongside the developers, like a BA, it might be beneficial to have you know a BA call and to say, hey, you know, like we're, we're we see these bugs, we see these issues, and you know, maybe it'd be nice to connect with those people and um, be the eyes and ears or representative of their organization for Transmart. Um, just a thought. And um, my uh, my email address is alex.papa, P-A-P-A, at transmartfoundation.org. So pretty simple. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I, I totally welcome any criticism or <laughs> positive remarks. Um, I I think this is this is going to be good. I'm really happy um, how, how quickly we've moved forward with the release process and the, the new committees. And I hope I'm, I'm showing that excitement and getting you guys excited as well. So... I guess thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I have a wish. A wish. One point two ten. Uh -huh. When it's on cloud, wish if uh, a functionality is not a part of the tree, that it does not have a button. Because every <laughs> user is always perplexed by buttons that don't really have any. So cleaning up the current version to make it more. Of an actual, okay, like a product. Okay, yeah, I, I can see that's a valid concern. Um, you know, I, as a personal um, issue that we have that, that we're fixing, um, there's some things that are very client facing, and we're like, oh no, we gotta fix that right now. Um, so I, I definitely sympathize with you. So I'll definitely put that forward. Thanks. Oops, sorry. So let's give uh, Alex a full applause.